basically today, ladies, we're going to be talking about self-image. I saw a video of Mrs. Romero on her Facebook. She went live with something that the Lord put on her heart. And it really touched my heart because um, I know that I struggle with the things that she brought up. I know that a lot of other ladies struggle with the things that she brought up. And um, you're more than welcome to watch that uh, live video that she put on her Facebook. Um, but basically, her and I are going to be talking about it tonight. Um, just kind of in more detail, a lot more um, explanation of what she was saying and what I'd like to say on the matter as well. And the matter is self-image. And basically what self-image is, it's, it's just how you view yourself and um, either with your personality or with your looks or with, you know, maybe even your spirituality. But I'm um, the thing that I, I'm pretty sure Leslie and I are going to be focusing on is just appearance and how you feel um, your self-worth is just with your appearance. And as ladies, we're a little bit more self-conscious about this. Um, just because of the way that we were raised when we were growing up, maybe, or maybe it's just because it's just femininity, I guess. It's just how we are. Um, but it's it's not something we should shy away from, but it's also not something that we should be consumed with. You know, beauty is vain. You know, uh, the Bible teaches that in Proverbs 31, which I'm pretty sure we're all familiar with. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall be praised. So we shouldn't be consumed with it, but also we really shouldn't ignore it. Um, there should definitely be a balance. So today, hopefully I have some notes <laughs> today. We'll be guiding this discussion more towards, uh, things that can get you down about your self image and steps to feeling good about yourself. So I guess I'll just open it up to you, Miss Leslie. Um, you brought up some things that can really get you down in your last video. Do you want to, you know, maybe talk about it? What are some things that could possibly get you down, um, sometimes? Well, I guess that uh, what people say about me, because I'm in the public eye a lot, I think, and people look up to me a lot. And so whether that's good or bad, I I really think it's a personalized thing, obviously, but um, people have a lot to say about me. And whether some people say good things and some people say negative things. So I'm definitely thinking about the way I look more lately, for just weird comments. but. Um, you know, and I'm self-conscious because I have a lot of kids and, you know, <laughs> you have to really maintenance your, you know, yourself and you, ha you can't just let yourself go when you have a lot of children, when you're going through lots of pregnancies and stuff. So that does have me self-conscious. Obviously I'm getting older. I have gray hair. Um, you know, I, I'm, you know, have big babies. So, you know, <laughs> I've had comments, weird comments about me having a big baby and how, you know, I'm a big woman and I don't know, it's just weird stuff. So it just makes you feel really self-conscious because you're, if I, like for me, I'm already working on my weight after I have a baby. Like I'm already, you know, minding like what I eat. I'm being very strict with myself. I don't allow myself to just um, eat sugar and, you know, I'm just real careful. And so I guess that's kind of where that post came from was I was just thinking about um, how easily I could get distracted with how I look and how it could just become consume me. And when it's really not that important, I've, I've been told recently that I'm, um, older, which I'm only 31. So I don't, and the person that told me that had a full head of gray hair. So what? I was just like, I'm older like them is what they said. So I was just like, I'm older. <laughs> and then I was like, okay. And, and then someone had made a comment about me having a big baby and that I'm a big woman. So I was like, hmm, I maybe I'm big, but you know, honestly, it doesn't really matter what people say and their perception of you, even though, you know, you should, like she said, don't let yourself go and you need to care about your appearance some, but that's not the, the main thing. So I don't know if that's what you were asking me, but yeah, I'm self-conscious. You know, I, I think like, I think most women are, I think most women are self-conscious about, um, see my husband. <laughs> I know. Uh, <laughs> yeah, there's four viewers. I'll send you the link. Yeah, I'll post the link on Facebook. So, um, yeah, I think that's kind of where it comes from. I think all women kind of tend to comment on other women's appearance, whether good or bad, you know, and I don't think it's all malicious at all. Right. And honestly, if, if there is a negative comment made, I think honestly what it comes from is 
Um, let me see, I'm trying to open Facebook here and post the link. But I think what it comes from is women are self-conscious themselves. So I think um, just them being self-conscious, you know, then they think like, well, you know, they're like me in this area or whatever, you know. So I, like I said, I don't think it's like malicious or like to be mean or anything, but it's just something that it's vain. Like she said, it's just vain. Well, it's pointless. Like, why are we even talking about this? Because we're all made differently. So I'm not like you and you're not like me. The Bible says, too, that we shouldn't compare ourselves among ourselves because right. it's not wise. So what do you think about that, Jocelyn? I, I agree. I think when, especially when you, you think to yourself also like, oh, she's so much prettier than me. Like I'm going to feel down or, oh, like, you know, I had so many children and she doesn't. So I'm just going to, I'm going to, I'm going to mope in that, or I'm going to be feel down about that. I think a lot of that with comparing yourself one toward another, I think a lot of it can come down on yourself. And then in retrospect, subconsciously, you go and you talk to that lady and maybe you say something, sorry, my cat, maybe you say something that's against her, like kind of like a little snide and it just comes from the heart, you know, out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. And so when you, and it's also bitterness, I'm, maybe I'm all over the place, but when you say something towards another woman and you know, it could be kind of derogatory, you know, it could be against her weight or you know, um, that she looks older or, or anything like that. Like what you're saying, I, I haven't really gotten any of those comments yet. So I, I guess I'm a little ignorant on it, on it. Um, but I think it also could be bitterness, um, about how they actually feel on the inside, or maybe they're just prideful or maybe they just, um, they just think they're so much awesomer. I, I don't really know. Uh, I haven't I really, you... in that. I'm sorry. Go ahead. I don't want to interrupt. But I, I wanted to just say, too, that I think sometimes people don't even think about what they're saying. Yeah. Like, their heart is like, I'm overweight, I'm big. And then they're like, just not even on purpose, but it just comes out. And when they're talking about somebody else, because they notice, like, well, they're, you know, they just, they're doing the comparison thing. And so it just comes out what's inside of their own heart. But right. stuff that they're dealing with, I'm older, you know, the converse, you know, and so... That just comes out when they're speaking to others because it's in their heart about themselves. You know, I, you're older like me. You're um, heavier like me. I've been told that. It's like, I don't know. It's, I think it, I think that it's because we tell, it's our self-talk. It's right. our self-talk that's coming out. And it could be bitterness. It could be envy. It could be all those things too. But um, in these cases, I really think it's the self-talk coming out. It's the stuff that they're telling themselves, you know, and they see a person, you know, that's, you know, I don't know. I'm not anybody, but an authority figure in the church or whatever, like somebody like a pastor's wife or whatever. Right. And they see them and they think, and I'm not an authority figure. Cause I, I mean, I don't, I'm not the boss of anything, but they think yeah, that, yeah. you know, yes, ma'am. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that about myself at all, but um, they see me and they think like, I want to be like that woman. And they, and I don't know, the, just like the weird, I don't know. There's just some weirdness to it. And I think that, um, and I, most women, I don't think, um, will outright come and just try to hurt somebody and bash them and hurt them. Most women are very kind and do want, do have kind hearts. So I, like I said, I think it really honestly comes from their self-talk, what they're saying to themselves in the mirror when they wake up and, and they think of themselves, you know what I'm saying? Right. I know. I know what you're saying. And they want to feel self vindicated in the fact that, oh, she's like me. We can talk about it. I can feel better about myself, you know, or I can, you know, vent in a way that it doesn't come off that I'm pouting or gloaty or anything like that. I feel no, I agree completely. It's what they're thinking on the inside. It's subconscious. And they just want to they either want to make light of it. They want to push it off and they don't want to feel feel about it, I guess, or they want to feel, like I said before, self-vindicated and have someone else be in that same boat with them because misery loves company, you know? Um, so, and, and honestly, the way that you, you feel about yourself, you should, you shouldn't be feeling like this about yourself. And we can definitely talk about that 
later. Maybe I'm getting, uh, we're getting ahead of ourselves, but I do agree. It's, um, I, I agree with you. I think it's a self vindicating process and, you know, people just want to talk about them and push it on other people. And I agree with you. And I don't think that people are malicious about it. And I think that some, maybe some women can be, and, um, that's wicked and they need to get right. But most women, like you said, are not that way. I think they just, it's just out of their heart and they can't do anything about it. But another thing that gets me down, um, I went soul winning the other day in an area that I used to be in very frequently when I was very worldly and, uh, memories of a past life or your, how you used to look in the past. Like, like you said, you know, you've had a lot of children, you're not the same weight anymore, you know, and you could maybe think back into some memories in the past of what you used to look like or how you used to feel or what you used to dress like. But, um, what I like to think of is that, you know, very famous verse, Hebrews 12, one, you know, leaving those things which are behind and pressing toward the mark. We really, as women, we need to forget our past world in this. We need to forget how we used to feel in those tight jeans, wicked jeans, you know, tight clothing and immodest clothing. We need to forget about it because if you think about it, it will bring you down. And I'm not, I don't, I doubt you, Miss Leslie, who have been, who's been in this for a very long time. I'm not sure if you go through um, those same thoughts, but I'm very new in this. I've been on, in this only maybe three years. So I'm sure some ladies can relate. Um, and I know some of my friends definitely can relate, but we, you should go into situations where um, you'll be tempted to think of past memories and you shouldn't go into um, just those thoughts because they will bring you down and they will make you think lesser of yourself. Um, if you're in that kind of defeatist mindset. Also, I have a lot of family members that um, will say things now that I'm not as, you know, cute or fashionable or um, fun, of course, as used to be. They, they, look, they look at me like I'm very drab and mopey and I hate my life and <laughs> bossed around all the time and, you know, all this. But that's totally not true. You know, and so a lot of family members can get you down. And so, and a main reason why I'm glad that we're talking about this is because I feel like a lot of ladies either, like I said, when we were texting earlier, a lot of ladies either ignore it and they just like, like let it eat at them, like how they feel about themselves or they just drown in it. And I've been a little bit of both. You know, when I first got into this movement, I feel like I'm talking a lot, but it's fine. When I first got into this movement, um, I thought, you know, I can't have any fashion. I was really wrong. Can't have any fashion. Can't do anything fun. You know, um, can't do my hair. Can't do anything, you know. And at first, it was just eating away at me, at how I would feel on the inside. Like, man, I don't feel as, you know pretty or I don't feel as important or I don't feel as, you know, good about myself. I just don't feel as good about myself as I used to. And then, you know, after a while I drowned in it and I felt very depressed and it, and that spiraled into me wanting, in a sense, it's really wrong. Me wanting to go back to my worldly days, me wanting to feel again, self vindicated. Right. But the thing is, is like we said in the beginning, beauty is vain. And so something that gets you down could be memories and it could be, you know, what people say to you, just like you were saying before, like family members, people that mean something to you, just small little comments. And, um, if they, if they eat about, eat at you, or if you just drown in them and you just let it go on and you don't do anything about it, that's whenever you'll go into depression or that's whenever you'll go and want to be worldly or, or, or just, fly off the handle and you you can't let yourself do that you can't let yourself get down at these comments that are made about being old (laughs) so silly old or or bigger you just you can't let them bring you down um so that's that's all I wanted to say about that you know because as a woman self-image is important and it's not just like in the beginning, it's not something that is 
um, need to be ignored. It's not something that needs to be that that needs to engulf your life. There needs to be a balance. So on on the one side of getting down, you have to make sure that you bring yourself up, that you can lift yourself up. Now, um, so we you have to have some steps about feeling good about yourself. So Leslie brought up a really awesome point in her video the other day that I don't even do, um, which is doing something nice for yourself every day. So Leslie, do you want to do you want to talk about that a little bit? Yeah, I want to back up just a minute because I I want to talk about um, beauty in as the youthful years. I think that it's important to realize that um, when you're youthful and you're young, you're beautiful, you know, and you're still beautiful. And in, in when as you age, the Bible says that a, a hoary head is a crown of glory if you found in the way of righteousness. So later on, you you trade your beauty and your strength if you're a man, <laughs> but you trade it for something better, you know. So, um, yeah, and then the Bible also says, envy not thou sinners. Because I think as women, I, for me, when I see a woman and she's dressed immodestly and she's trying to maybe attract men's attention, maybe the attention of my husband or someone else's or even just a man in general, because that's why women dress that way. Um, you know, it makes me think like, well, if I could dress like that. You know, <laughs> and I think that that's my flesh, obviously, but, oh, I could dress like that and just, you know, not care, but I do care. And, and I don't just care what people think of me. I care what the Lord thinks of me. So I think of that verse a lot about that specific topic because, um, you know, it, it, I don't know, it just gets under my skin a lot because right. I think like, I don't want someone else causing you know, my husband or someone else's husband's eyes to turn from their wife. Do you know what I'm saying? So I think about that a lot. And, and I did, I did used to dress in a bad way when I was younger and, and it was for the wrong reasons. And so I don't even go there. And I wanted to mention that because we talked about that in the Gently Led Sisters before on depression. But if you do visit the past, you can't stay there. You must take out the trash. So you need to take that thought and throw it away, Th crumple it up and throw it in the dumpster of your mind because it's not going to help you and it's only going to hurt you. And that, and the devil wants that. He wants to distract you from what's important. So um, that is one of the main things that I was talking about on my, my live video was just that don't be distracted with this beautiful thing, this, this worldly philosophy of beauty, but um, yeah, so going back to what you said, just um, doing something nice for yourself every day. And um, this is so important because especially as moms, moms tend to like not care about anyone else but their kids and their husband, and they don't think about themselves at all. And so then their health suffers and also their image suffers and their self-worth suffers as well. So um, if you just do one thing every day for yourself, you're going to feel a little better. You're, you're going to have a lot more confidence and you're going to, you know, like what you put on, you know, put, like your clothing, learn how to dress yourself to where you like your, yourself and don't, you don't have to wear frumpy clothing. You don't have to, you know, wear baggy clothes or old, I don't know, old, what is it? old women's clothing <laughs> you don't have to look like that you don't have to look like an old lady you know do something nice for yourself every day if that means shaving your legs or that means painting your toenails or that means you know fixing your hair or you know using I don't know whiten your teeth or I don't know put on some pretty perfume just make yourself feel good go buy yourself a new outfit <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I totally agree with that. And I notice if I don't do that, or if I don't get dressed, or if I, you know, I can leave my hair go, it can go a mess for, you know, a day or two. But if I don't get dressed, and if I don't, you know, make sure I like wash myself, <laughs> I don't know, I feel gross. And I don't want to, I'm, I'm more idle. I don't want to do as much because I feel not very good. And you know, I even, I, I love that the Bible has Ruth and Esther, those books in the Bible, because it actually talks about in both of those books, somewhere where both Ruth and Esther get ready, um, because think about it, 
Ruth's mother says, oh, okay, you're going to go see Boaz? All right. Well, why don't you make sure you put on some different clothes? Just, like, anoint yourself. You know, wash yourself, anoint yourself. Get ready, girl, because you're going to go see your man, right? She, Ruth probably felt, <laughs> she probably felt really great. You know, we also, let's talk about Esther. Before she went to King Ahasuerus, right, she was in the the house of women. I'm not sure what it's called. She was in there six months with, you know, oils and myrrh and another six months with some nice smelling odors, right? She was probably feeling gorgeous, right? And that's just with oils and and nice smelling things. And so, you know, if some something I like to do is I like to, you know, make sure I clean my face. I like to, you know, make sure that I put some moisturizer on. Coconut oil is great. And it gives me this nice glow. And I don't feel like I have to wear makeup. And it's biblical. A lot of ladies, you know, maybe when they first start out like me, they don't think it's biblical to to try to look pretty. I don't know. I was crazy. But it's very biblical. You should definitely make, um, definitely be making yourself feel nice. Just like you're saying, you should put on something nice, put on some perfume and don't do it only for yourself. Do it for your husband or do it for yourself. (laughs) No one else, but, (laughs) but yeah, do it for yourself and, you know, get ready, do something special for yourself, you know, and don't let yourself go. And don't, I love that you said, and uh, that verse envy, not thou sinner. That is that is so key because when you're thinking about um, your old self or you're thinking about how the world dresses or you're thinking about this or you're thinking about that and you're being discontent, well, the discontentment is because you're envying. It's because you want that, and, but you can't have it. I'm sorry. You can have it if you want to live godly. So, um, but yeah, take care of yourself. Put some oil on. Glow, girl. You can glow. <laughs> Get it. <laughs> Get you some oils. Get you some essential oils. <laughs> my husband likes to make fun of my essential oils. <laughs> really? <laughs> I love essential oils. They're great. I like the way they smell, too. Uh, there was some uh, bug spray, essential oil bug spray in the car. I think some of it got spilled. It was yesterday. And my husband's like, what is that smell? It is so strong. And I was like, don't you like it? <laughs> It's just lemongrass, but it's really strong, you know, so. Love lemongrass. It's funny. But, um, but yeah, I mean, and it's not even, okay. And we're talking a lot about self-image because I think that's mainly what we're talking about. Um, but it's not even, it's not even that, like you said before, you can really get consumed with your children. I don't have that problem yet, but, um, you can really get consumed with your children and put everything towards them. And so it's, it doesn't even come towards only self-image, but also what are you doing with your time? Are you spending any time doing something for yourself? Like possibly taking up a hobby or taking a nap. I heard that uh, you take, I, I watched one of your, one of your gently led sisters. You're the one that takes naps, right, Miss Leslie? I don't nap, but if I'm pregnant, I take a nap every day. Okay. You take a nap every yeah. day. You do every day. Especially when I, when, I, whenever I'm tired and I'm pregnant, I take a nap every day. I have to. Okay. Are you able to do anything other than that? Or are you just so busy with those kiddos? I don't take, I hate napping, actually. <laughs> Ask my husband. I hate naps. I feel like there's so much that can be done. I hate, I feel like it's a waste of time. Um, but no, I, I try to do things for myself. I usually don't. So what happens is I need to wake up early and I need to get up before everyone else. And I need to do something for me, which is usually getting a lot of Bible reading in and praying. That helps me the most. I know that that's like the spiritual answer. It's not a worldly, you virtuous, lustly <laughs> thing, but I need that. I really need that every single day. And then I like to, if I, I really should need to, I don't every day, but I should, I really need to shower in the morning before everyone gets up. Because if I wait and do it when all my kids are awake and stuff, then I'm always worried. Like, what are they doing out there? And, you know, I, I I really got to get it in that in early in the morning. So, and then before my husband gets up, because then he wants to do all of his stuff and shower and all that. So showering is big. Mrs. Uh, (laughs) 
Mrs. Perry told me, because I, I have a, cer a secret and I'm going to tell the whole world right now, but I don't, I hate shaving my legs. I, I despise it. I think it's terrible. Um, anyway, you should see uh, I know my husband doesn't like it that I don't shave my legs, but I'm kind of a hippie. I, and I, my husband like kind of laughs a little bit about me being a hippie, but I kind of am. I'm, I don't mean to be, I'm not a dirty hippie, but I, I kind of am, you know, at, at heart. I'm okay. kind of like, just kind of, I'll just go, I don't know. I just, I'm kind of a hippie. So I don't see the importance of it, but I understand that it's gross. Okay. I get it. So Mrs. Perry told me that she's like, girl, you got to shave your legs for your man. She's like all about it. I love it. And she's like, you, you know what you need to do? She said, you need to shave one leg a day. She said, every other day, shave one leg, <laughs> shave one leg one day and one leg the next day. <laughs> there, you won't spend a lot of time doing it and it's done. And I think that's great, great advice. So okay. <laughs> even if you got to shave one leg a day, do it for your man <laughs> or do it for yourself because you need to do stuff for yourself. You need to feel good. You don't want to be like, oh man, I got to cover up these pokies on my leg. <laughs> I hope these ladies don't see these when I'm, when I'm wearing my, you know, midi you know, skirt or whatever. So yeah. Okay. Do I, do I, feel like, I feel like the spirit was speaking through you to me because I don't shave my legs either. <laughs> <I'm> <laughs> I don't like it, but if it's, if it's one leg a day and if it's for my husband, I'll try it out. I Just, one. <laughs> Just one. Just um, one. Some things that I do to keep myself busy, um, because I think if you get idle, which I'm sure you don't have a problem with, but when, Let's say if you're uh, a married woman like myself and you're not, you don't have any children yet and you're just kind of at home all day, there's that, um, there's that um, snare from the devil of possibly being a busybody or possibly just becoming so idle. So uh, I just, I really like to just keep myself busy. And, you know, my, my husband and I, we usually wake up around, you know, it depends, it's six or seven I drop them off at work and then I'm just, I'm there all day long. And so you, you could imagine from seven to seven is 12 hours with no children. What am I doing with my time? And I've noticed if I do have an idle day to where maybe I'm on Facebook way too long or I'm on YouTube way too long or, you know, I'll confess my sins. You know, I can become very idle. Um, and that makes me feel down about myself. It makes me feel like I'm worthless. It makes me feel like I'm lazy. It makes me feel just just utterly terrible. And I hate it so much when I feel like that. And I'm only feeling like that because of what I'm doing wrong. And so um, I've tried to take up a couple of hobbies. <laughs> try to take up knitting. I've tried to, you know, I just got a sewing machine for the wedding. And, you know, I'm trying to come up with that vaccination documentary and a video for my pastor. And you know, just staying busy. Also, ladies, whoever is listening, staying busy will help you feel better about yourself. Because if you're if you're sick, lame and lazy, you're going to feel sick, lame and lazy. And, um, you know, Leslie, she doesn't have any problems. <laughs> All she has to make sure she does is shower. <laughs> so. No, it's a different it's totally different life than you, because you're in totally different season of life than I am. Like my, my season of life is I need to slow down. My season of life is I need those chill times where I'm not doing anything. So, but I, I'm, my personality is not like that. So I am busy every day and I try to keep myself busy every day. Cause I do, I can become crazy in my mind and start thinking about stuff I shouldn't think about because I'm not doing anything. Like I, I'm, Maybe I'm shirking work or I'm not, I don't want to do this chore. It's, oh, it's, it seems too daunting. It seems too big. It's a big, huge chore and I don't want to do it. And I just think like, I just want to sit here. Or I also have an autoimmune disease, which sometimes keeps me on the couch and I get real sore and I just get real tired. My bones hurt and I ache and I hate that because I'm just sitting there and I just feel so worthless. So yeah, do something, get up and do something, even if it's working out or you know, running errands for people or, you know, just be a blessing. I know something. Um, and I just want to give a quick tip about depression because I know a lot of women struggle with it or just, and it goes with self image. Um, if you feel down, like, let's say you're having a down day, like look, for whatever reason, you're having a down day and you're crying. <laughs> let's say you're crying. You're having a crying day. Okay. 
You know what you need to do? Is you need to pick up your cell phone. Yeah, you got it right next to you. You know what you do. <laughs> and you pick it up and you scroll through your phone contacts and you say, I haven't talked to that person in a while. I'm going to pray for them right now. And then I'm going to text them. Hey, how are you doing? I'm praying for you. Do that to 10 people. Do that for 10 people. Say, I, or, I miss you. I love you. I'm thinking of you. Um, you know, I hope you're having a good day. That'll brighten your spirits. That'll make you feel good. It doesn't necessarily have to be about the way you look, your physical appearance. Just feeling good about yourself can come from putting value into other people and putting effort and love into others. So um, that's why that's a Christian life is putting love into other people. The Bible says, uh, and this is John speaking, the John the Baptist, but he said, and he must increase and I must decrease. So if you're feeling like real down, it's probably because you're real selfish. No offense to anybody. No, you're right. <laughs> if you're feeling really down, it's probably because you only care about you. Like, oh, woe is me. I have this going on, this blah, blah, blah. But then if you get, like I said, pick up your phone, you got it right there, you know I do. <laughs> and just text 10 people that you know and tell them and pray for them and tell them you're thinking of them and you know maybe find out something you can help them with or something and that'll make you feel better so and my my pastor always says pastor Manley he always says if you you serve who you love and you'll love who you serve and if you want your love to grow and if it's love for yourself or if it's love for other people, you're going to do service. You're going to do more and you're not going to just, like you're saying, just sit there idle. But you're going to go love people and the greatest love is soul winning. So if you're depressed about yourself, you need to go soul winning. If you're down, you need to go give someone the gospel or go through your gospel presentation or send a few links to some people on how to go to heaven that aren't saved. And that's how you'll get your love back. That's how you'll get you know, one of the fastest ways I believe to get out. So, um, you're right, Miss Leslie, you need to do for others and stop, stop wallowing in your, in your self pain and your, and you know, and ladies, whoever's listening, we're not saying that, you know, we're not pointing the finger at you and saying, oh, you're, you're so terrible because you're depressed and this and that. We're not saying that. Both Leslie and myself have gone through something like that. It's very hard to go through. It's very painful to be, you know, in that state of mind. But we're trying to help you get out of that. We're trying to help you give advice and to get you out of that state of mind and make sure that you're, you know, taking steps to feel good about yourself, making sure that you do for others so you can still, you can get your love back and um, not wallow in that self-pain. So. Jocelyn, do you have um, fashion tips in your outline? I don't, but I can. I, can. Oh, <laughs> I was going to say, you should, you should do some fashion tips Let's do some to help people tips. feel better about themselves. Yeah, um, fashion tips. Okay, so it's so funny. We, w my pastor just preached on 1 Timothy 2, which is about adorning yourself. He literally preached on it tonight. So, which is adorning yourself in shamefacedness modest. and modest apparel. <laughs> sober you know face right and so um a lot of people think that that is wearing a burlap sack on your head and all cream clothing and you have to put your head down <laughs> and just, oh, great, light. no and that is what i thought when i first got into this movement i thought okay can't be so serious i just gotta be so serious right and that's just that is not no you no don't do that okay but also you, you should not go over the top, okay? And this is something I'm, you know, slowly really learning about. Um, and I think over the top, you know, with makeup, um, again, I don't, I don't think makeup is sinful if it's done modestly. Um, but the thing is, is the only time makeup is mentioned in the Bible is when Jezebel's wearing it. And so I think that's a huge flash in your face if you're trying to study and understand makeup in the Bible. Well, the only thing you'll study and understand is when Jezebel paints her face to go after Elijah. So you should really think about that. I really thought about it. And um, you should not go over the top with your makeup. Um, but if you want to wear a little makeup like me, I try to wear just a little bit now. 
I try to, you know, if I have a couple of blemishes, I try to just cover those up. I put on a little bit of mascara, a little bit of blush, and that is it. And that makes me feel on the inside, makes me feel good. And I, I maybe do it once every two weeks, once a month now. And so that's one little fashion tip about makeup. You can do it moderately and still feel good. Some ladies do it for fun. A, lo a lot of ladies that I know that, that do their makeup, they say, oh, I only do it for fun. Well, you do it for fun, but you also do it to feel good. Um, but it should be in a modest way. Um, and the next fashion tip is you really can get a lot of cute, a lot of tr not trendy, um, a lot of, you know, designer brands at thrift stores. You know, I go to a lot of thrift stores and you have to go to a lot of different ones to find something cute and that fits properly. Um, but honestly, it takes a long time to build up your wardrobe. It really does if you're first starting out. Um, so you have to definitely try to get a lot of different styles of skirts, a lot of different styles of dresses. That way you can feel new and fresh. You know, I had a couple of women actually email me the other day, Miss Leslie, about how they feel down um, when they're wearing a skirt and it's raining. So they'll say, you know, I hate wearing a skirt when it's raining because I feel so wet. You know, I feel like really gross and, and soggy. Well, you need to find a skirt that you can wear. And if it rains, it's not going to be see-through. You need to find, you know, a good long jean skirt. And if it gets soaked, you would have gotten soaked in some jeans too anyways. So you need to have different types of skirts. And um, you need to make sure that your jewelry also is not black. But you can wear jewelry. Miss Leslie is wearing a necklace right now. Very fun. Yeah, my girls made it. <laughs> really? yeah. Very fun, you know. And I noticed at the very beginning of the video and I thought, oh, that's nice. You know, it's it's nice to have one piece of jewelry. It's nice to have a, a nice pair of earrings on. But again, if it if it's big, huge hoops and if it's just row after row after row of like silver chains and just like 20 bedazzled bracelets on your wrist, it's too much. But also, I don't think that's very becoming. I think you, you could, you know, adorn yourself modestly and, you know, show the love of Christ. And if you're trying to draw attention to yourself, you're doing it the wrong way. So, uh, but fashion, you just, you, you can still look cute. You can still look fun. You can still match your colors and you can still, you know, some, some people say you shouldn't wear specific colors. I don't believe in that because, you know, every color is in the rainbow. I think you can wear purples and reds and pinks. And, you know, I don't think that they, they should be neon or anything. Cause that's a little, it's a little flashy. Um, but you can be fashionable and modest at the same time. You know, I love this shirt. I think it's fun, right? I don't know. Leslie, do you have any advice? I, I don't really know what to say about it, about the fashion. I didn't write yeah. it. <clears throat> I think too, like women should be happy even though they are not perfect, they don't have perfect bodies. So you let, this is what you should do is you, this is one of my fashion tips is, you know, and I, I don't always dress fashionably. Like sometimes I just kind of dress with, with whatever is in my closet, throw and go. Right. But, um, you know, I try to dress nice, especially for church and, and things like that. And I, I do have a modest mindset. I want to be modest. I don't want to be like out there, but you know, you don't have to have a perfect body to dress, to feel beautiful in your clothing. You can feel beautiful and comfortable and confident in your clothing. And this is how is the go to your closet, put on your favorite outfit, the one you love that you think I really look good in this. I love this. This is my favorite. And then figure out why you like it. Maybe it accentuates your waist a little bit, or maybe it um, you know, maybe you have small shoulders and it helps you broaden out your shoulders a little, um, you know, it, who knows whatever makes you feel really good when you put that outfit on, try to duplicate that in your other clothing and even clothing you still have in your closet. So think like, okay, well, how can I make this kind of like that? And, um, I know that if you, for me, if I don't get up and get dressed in something I like every day. I just feel frumpy and I feel blah, even if, even if I'm showered and I'm clean and you know, my legs are shaved or whatever, <laughs> I still 
feel blah, you know? So, and I wear flip-flops every day. So I try to, when I, when I feel really blah, I'll put on a nice outfit and I'll put on some nice shoes and I'll go somewhere, you know, do, yeah, it's okay. It's okay. I have a pair of red shoes. I wore them yesterday and I was thinking like, I don't wear these very often, but I'm going to wear them today because I was wearing like black and white. So I was like, I'm going to wear my red shoes. And I don't think that's immodest. It's just, yeah, it's okay to make your wardrobe fun. It's okay to, you know, in, in, in a modest way, not going crazy, not, you know, going all out. But, you know, like I said, just go, to, that's my biggest fashion. Go to your closet, find the outfit you love, try to duplicate that and the things that you already have in your closet and just um, wear a simple piece of jewelry or fix your hair differently. Um, find out, go on YouTube or whatever and find out different hairstyles that you can try out or your kind of hair that you have. Maybe you have thin hair or you have curly hair or you have, um, you know, long hair, whatever. And just, you know, study yourself a little bit and find out what makes you feel good. You know, when, you, like I said, when you put the clothes on, what makes you feel good about them? So that's my biggest thing. And like I said, you can feel good about the woman you are, no matter if you just had a baby or you just had surgery or, you know, you're, you're sick or whatever, you, you still feel good about yourself. And if you ever have those, those comments in your mind coming up that tell you, you know, oh, I look bad or, oh, you know, I'm. I'm, I'm too big right here. My stomach's fat. I'm, you know, whatever, whatever kind of bad thoughts are coming in your mind, make sure you take out the trash because that's where it belongs. And now you should, I don't think you should just let yourself go. You should care about your body, especially your health. Um, and you should care about your body for the sake of your husband because you want him to, you know, desire you as a woman. But at the same time, if you just had a baby, it's not, not the time to worry about working out. Uh, if you just had a baby, it's not the time to worry about your flabby stomach, <laughs> you know, within reason, just be reasonable with yourself. Um, you know, like having balance, not giving yourself too much slack, but also at the same time, don't get carried away with how you look every single day. Um, this is one of the reasons why maybe women shouldn't own a scale <laughs> because they get on it every day, all day, or maybe they are uh, obsessed with it or, you know, you just need to have a balance when it comes to the way you look and don't focus so much on that because we're all made differently. You know, some women are, are predisposed to being bigger and some women are predisposed to being very thin and they can't gain weight, you know, and maybe they wish they could. So, um, and then the Hollywood look or the look of, you know, you know, TV people or magazine women or whatever, they're all airbrushed. They don't look like that. Real women have curves. Real, real, real women have dimples. Real <laughs> women have imperfections. They have moles. They have, you know, different things about them that make them unique in their own person. And some women get really tan and some women are really pale. And we're just all made differently and embrace that because we are made that way. God gave you. And going back to wearing makeup, I wanted to just make a comment about it because I don't really wear a lot of makeup. I do wear some um, maybe just because I am self-conscious about my face because people make comments about it all the time constantly. I do have eczema on my face. It's red. It makes my face red. Um, I've had it for six years or something. I didn't used to. When I was youthful, I didn't have this on my face. I had very clear skin. I didn't have wrinkles here, you know, um, all these things. So I, I do, yes, and it makes me feel better. It makes me feel more confident. I don't think that's what, anything wrong with it. Just cover, you know, just kind of freshening up my skin and making me feel less red. So people aren't like, what's wrong with your face? You know, you must be really hot right now. I'm like, yeah, let's just make all the comments about my face because it makes me feel so conscious. So I just wear the powder and it's fine. I'm fine. But going back to wearing makeup, God, I tell my girls this and I really believe it. God made you beautiful. He made you perfectly. What The way he wanted you to look, he gave you the eyes you have, the eyelashes that you have, your eyebrows. He gave you your skin complexion. He gave you these, gave you your hair color. He gave you everything that you have going on for you, which is a lot. You're beautiful. And, you know, embrace that. Be thankful. Tell the Lord, thank you. And, and focus in on the things that you like about yourself. And don't focus on the things that you cannot change. Don't focus on the 
things about yourself that you cannot change and do what you can to change the things you don't like if you could change them. So that's the balance there. No, I really, I really like you said, I didn't know what direction you were going in with fashion, but you did, you did a great job on, on both parts. I, I would say the same exact thing. Pick out a cute outfit, whatever you like the most about it, wear that, you know, and try to make sure that you like, don't wear things that you don't want to wear. You know, I know that sounds so silly, but if you don't like really like over, like personally, I don't like overly flowy shirts. I feel really fat in them. And so I don't like to wear overly flowy shirts. I like flowy shirts, but not overly flowy because I feel like so big in them. And I used to wear them. And it's just like, why would I, why would I wear what I don't want to, what I don't want to wear, you know? So wear what you want to wear, but make sure, like you were saying, it's modest. Put on a pair of red shoes. You know, you're right. I, I love all of that. Yeah. Put on some red shoes. I have some red shoes, actually. I don't really wear them all that often either. Um, I this is how you wear the red shoes. Can I give you a tip? Yeah, yeah, yeah. go ahead. Yeah. This is how you wear your red shoes, okay? You put on some, oh, you know, a, a very plain top, a very plain bottom, maybe <laughs> kind of frilly on the top, you know, maybe a little bit, just but plainish. Then put your red shoes on and put on a, a nice necklace, and there you go. Here's your outfit. You look great. And they make so you can take turn your plain outfit into something cute. Because you got red shoes and maybe a cute necklace that cor you know is coordinating with your red shoes. Right. And if you if like if you have like red top, red pants, red shoe, it it's not even special about your shoes anymore. You know, so don't go overboard. Just just keep it all in line. You're cute, you're comfy, and you're wearing your red shoes. So yeah. I totally agree with all that. And I love how you talked about um, how we're fearfully and wonderfully made. You know, I catch myself thinking, oh, I'm flabby here. I need to get this in tone or whatever. And it's just being discontent with how God made me and how God made me to grow. And so um, I think ladies thinking about that as well is very important. And I also think um, I like what you said earlier about not letting yourself go um, because I think that could be like a tendency, you know, um, I've been to, I used to be a professional dancer. And so I was in ballet and contemporary. I was always, I was very fit. And then when I stopped, I really just like, I feel like I just let myself go. I ate whatever I wanted. And I, I gained a lot of weight and you know, it made me, it makes you feel down about yourself. <laughs> so it's so funny. I was just talking to my husband about this today about how, working out can really make you feel good. Even if you work out for 10 minutes out of the day, um, it can make you feel healthy and it can make you, it, it could be a really good step to making, um, making you feel good about yourself. And so, you know, a lot of, if you go on these fitness pages, a lot of these pages want you to work out for like 30 minutes at home or they want you to, you know, 25 minutes and just diving into that can make you feel really terrible and unfit. Um, but I was just talking to him about this today. You know, you could maybe work out for 10 minutes. At what? What's going on? <laughs> okay, so I'll tell you a funny story. This week, uh, my sister got me to uh, sign up to do uh, the clean week on Beach Bodies. I think it's called something. Anyway, so I'm going to do the workout, right? I get, I do the, th it's 30 minutes every day. And that's so funny because you said that. And I was thinking she's done beach bodies. But anyway, so this beach bodies workout, I did it for like 25 minutes and it was hardcore. Okay, I almost died. I'm serious. <laughs> it's hard. And I am like out of shape. I I do not work out. <laughs> the last time I tried to work out, I ran for three days. And the third day I hurt my knees so bad I couldn't walk right for a month. <laughs> I was so messed up. I had to wear knee braces. It was so bad. It was so, so bad. I tore the meniscus disc, meniscus discs in my knees. So that's why I was messed up for so long. But anyway, so I'm totally out of shape doing this 30 minute workout. So, and then my sister, cause she's like helping me. She's like my trainer, right? She's like my coach or whatever. So she, every day she's like, how's your workout? I'm like, I haven't worked out today. Guess why? Because my legs hurt so bad from the first day. I can't even work out. And then like, I already hurt my back a couple of weeks ago. And I thought, okay, working out is good. It's going to help stretch out my back. It's going to make me feel better. And then I was like, 
devastated. So Monday I worked out. Tuesday I, I was devastated. I went to the chiropractor. She couldn't even give me an adjustment because I was so I had so much inflammation, so she could barely adjust me. And then on yesterday, my my sister texted me, "How's your workout?" And I was like, "I didn't work out. I'm gonna try to work out tomorrow." And then today I was like, "I can't do anything. I am my legs hurt. My back." <laughs> I'm tired. I'm like I can't do this. And then I'm thinking like 30 minute workouts are not for me. And then you said that. So that's okay. why I was laughing. Okay. So again, so 10 minute is, workouts. I'm going to do it. It's the spirit. It's got to be the spirit. Okay. So yeah, I was, and I was thinking because I, I was like you, I tried doing this five day, 30 minute workout a day, you know, exercise thing. And my sister my sister and I did it <laughs> and we did it the first week and every single day that we went to go do it, we did it so grudgingly, <laughs> so upset, but afterward we felt really good, but then the next day we're so sore and so we didn't want to do it. And by the time day five was ended, we didn't want to go back into it, you know, or I didn't and we didn't. And then I felt sick, lame and lazy, you know? <laughs> um, I worked out today. I worked out yesterday. I worked out the day before. And I've been feeling really good about going to work out because I'm not doing it. I'm not jumping into 30 minutes a day. You know, I'm starting with 10 minutes. I know it sounds like not a lot, but honestly, I felt really good about it, especially today. I, it's like the more and more I did it, I felt a lot better about it. And I think I can work up to 30 minutes. I can work up to it. So if you start at 10 minutes, this is how I'm doing it. I'm, I'm going to try to practice what I'm saying because um, I just started. But if I, I'm going to do 10 minutes for a month, I just want to do it every single day for a month. And I think consistency is the most important thing. If I just do it every single day for the next month, excluding Sundays, I'm not working out on Sundays. <laughs> um, but if I do it every single day for the next month, then the next month I want to add five more minutes on. And the next month, five more minutes. And that way, if you feel overweight, like, you know, I sometimes do, or maybe other women in this movement feel overweight, or they feel gross, or, you know, I know I notice if I eat poorly and I don't work out or anything, I have blemishes as well. And, you know, if you want to feel good, not, on, not only should you take those steps that Leslie and I were talking about earlier um, to feeling good about yourself, anointing yourself with oil, putting on a cute outfit, not only should you do that, but you should be active and you should be working out. It really boosts your energy um, and um, it gives you those endorphins and it, it does make you feel good about yourself and you'll actually be able to physically see a difference in your body. So uh, maybe don't go into the beach body workout like Miss Leslie in the very beginning. <laughs> I'm too zealous with working out, I think. My husband's like, you need to do a beginner workout. And I'm like, that is the beginner workout. <laughs> right. It is, but it's, so, it's so hard like if you're not working out continuously the beginner workout is like extreme it's so difficult but um but yeah so anyways is there anything else you kind of want to say about the topic about self-image no I just I I I love women and I want to help women and um I know for myself like I feel like most women just suffer alone and they hurt alone, and they think a lot of this stuff alone. But then it does come out when they're speaking, you know, to others, and maybe in a critical way, or maybe in, and not even a critical way, just not even thinking about what you're saying. Let's be women, all of everyone out there, let's be women that encourage with other women and build them up. Let's not be critical of them or think of them in, in a way that you think of yourself, you know, and then then change your inner voice, change what you're thinking about inside yourself. Tell yourself the right things that I, you know, and my husband, he gets on me about this. And I think this is a woman thing. He says, you're telling yourself the wrong stuff. He says, you're saying the wrong stuff to yourself. You're telling yourself the wrong things. And I do, I do. I tell myself the wrong things. And I don't think it's bad to tell yourself like certain things, but when it's not helping and it's just hurting and it's not it's not driving you to do better and maybe it's something you cannot change about yourself then let it go 
and give it to God and then move on and then be the be the encouragement and difference that you want to see in other people's lives. Be that to some some other woman, because mostly women are hurting. Mostly women are depressed. Mostly women are really self-conscious about the way they look. And I I try not to say, oh, no, I don't even I try not to even say this. You look really tired. I because it doesn't mean you look good. You look <laughs> tired. I know I look tired. I have eight kids. I haven't slept in 12 years. I'm really tired, but please don't tell me I look tired because I don't want to look tired. I want to look good. I want to look happy. You know, there's a guy last night. He's like, this is Romero. You look happy today, like more than normal. And I was like, thanks, buddy. <laughs> But it's just, I guess, you know, I'm a mom and I don't, I don't know. I'm tired. Yes, I am. But if you can help it, you know, and I'm not saying it's bad. I'm not saying these women that say that is bad. I'm not, I'm not, but right. I know mostly it's in care. Like, oh, you look tired. You know, I'm sorry. You know, just trying to be empathetic or whatever, but just be encouraging with your, with your talk. And that can go in many different avenues and not just talking about women and their self image or whatever, but just that can help you in your Christian life. Just think about what you're going to say before you say it, how it's going to affect that person. Um, and then be an encouragement, be a blessing. Um, try to p uh, push people in a positive direction. And then if you see something, I, I once heard this quote and, and I think that it's probably one of the thing one of something that about my self image that always, not just self, but self-image, but self-esteem. Okay. Um, that I always remember, and it said, if you see something good in someone else, make sure you tell them. Because they're not going to hear it from anywhere else. And they may never hear that. So if you see something good in somebody else, tell them. Be like, you look, you know, great. You're doing great, you know. And maybe not like, you look so great because you're, you know, you lost 20 pounds. I, I can tell. Whatever, but, you know, just being encouraging, like, you look really good. You look beautiful. I usually tell women, like, that's a great outfit. I really like it. You know, you look really nice, you know, and, and that's what, that's, that's how women want to be treated really. <laughs> so if you see something good in somebody, let's say they're being very kind, they're going out of their way, they're doing something great, more above and beyond the way they look, compliment them, tell them about it, be a blessing, be an encourager, be somebody who uplifts the brethren. And you know what? I want to tell if there's anybody out there that ever hears this video and thinks I told Mrs. Romero that thus and so whatever, <laughs> I love you. And I don't even care because I know how it is. It's okay. I love you. And I'm happy. I'm ha I am happy with the way God made me. And I understand that I'm going to age. I'm never going to be youthful again as as I once was that's why the bible talks about like your husband enjoying the wife of your youth you know because when your wife is youthful she's beautiful and she has all these things going for her but as as age and time goes on you be you become less youthful your your skin loses its elasticity <laughs> And it becomes wrinkly and you get gray hair and, you know, all these different things. And it's okay. That's normal. That's part of aging. That's part normal part of life. And the Bible says if you get gray hair and if you be, you're in the way of righteousness, if you continue in the faith, then you're, that's going to be a crown of glory to you. Right. So you trade one thing for the other and it's worth it. It's worth it. So, and, and if you're out there thinking like, I can't have all these kids because my body, it's going to be ruined. Well, guess what? If you have all those kids, you give them your youth and then you can watch your youth be youth still when you're old and you're, you know, cause you're still going to get old <laughs> someday or something, but then you'll have youth around you. You'll have the youth of your children. You'll have the youth of their children and your great grandchildren. So that you'll just continue passing your youth down because you got children. It's a blessing. It's great. It's wonderful. I love to see how beautiful my girls are, you know, becoming women now and they're growing and they're changing and I love it. I think like, yeah, and I'm getting old, but it's okay because they have my beauty. They got it. It's okay. I'm okay with giving it to them.
I what I like I don't know who whoever is listening are our three listeners but um I really like how you Miss Leslie are taking so many negatives and you're turning them into positives and that's what's going to keep you lifted up in your self image that's going to that's what's going to keep you lifted up in your self worth your self vindication whoever you think you are or however you want to be if you think positive what sort of things are pure? What sort of things are honest? What sort of things are of good rapport, of virtue, of uh, if there be any virtue, or if there be any, think on these things. And that's just like really emanating from you, Miss Leslie, because you're able to stay happy because you are turning that positivity to other people. You're texting other people and you're telling them, hey, I hope you have a good day, even if you're not having a bad day. If, if, even if you're having a bad day, you're, you're giving someone else a good day. And even if you're, um, uh, whatever you you just said I'm, it's getting late so I'm a little tired but um <laughs> you're just you're exhorting that positivity and that's what's going to make you feel good about yourself even when you're making other people feel good even if you don't have your youth that's what you're talking about even if you don't have your youth anymore you can put that on your children and you can feel good through them and I hear a lot of people say that oh don't live through your children no you can live through your children I don't have any children yet. But you can go have fun with them at the park. You can go have a good time. You can go be youthful and be fun and feel good about yourself through your children. That's why God gave you those children, to be a blessing to you, to be an encouragement to you, and to remind you of, of, of fun times and give you fun times. So you can live through your children. You can be youthful through them. You can, you can make them fashionable. You can make them feel good about themselves. You can lift them up. And in turn, just like service gives you, you know, when you serve people, you love them and you'll love yourself. So I love that positivity from you, Miss Leslie. Yeah. That was really that's really good. That's really awesome. That's something to learn, ladies, whoever's listening. Be positive, just like Miss Leslie. But anyways, let's just go through an overview of what we what we talked about and then I'm gonna eat dinner <laughs> and go to bed. Um, but you know, like we said earlier, there needs to be a balance. You know, beauty is vain. But you cannot just shove how you feel about yourself into a corner. You need to take care of yourself. Um, you need to put the you, you need to take out the trash of your memories if those are getting you down. You need to take out the trash. Um, you need to not be just thinking about those comments from other people that they say um, because usually they're self wallowing or they're they want to feel self vindicated. Um, so you need to take out the trash of your your past memories. You need to not be listening to those comments. You need to be remembering that you're fearful, fearfully and wonderfully made. And you need to take those steps to make yourself feel good. You need to shave one leg at a time, one day at a time. <laughs> shave one leg, okay? Put on a nice outfit that accentuates your waist or makes your shoulders nice. Put on your red shoes. Anoint yourself with some oil. Take a shower. <laughs> feel good. <laughs> Work out for 10 minutes. And and push positivity on others and it'll make yourself feel loved. You'll have a better image of yourself and um, you'll be happier and you won't get down and you won't let others get you down because you're lifting them up. So I love this convo, Miss Leslie. You have, I have so much to learn from you. I love the Gently Led Sisters. Um, Y'all have such good advice and um, I love this. I think this. <laughs> I wish Cassandra could be here. I, we should have invited her. She would have loved to come on. I think she would <laughs> I really like yeah. it. Yeah, it was short notice, but we did it. It was really short notice <laughs> and tons of technical errors, but it happened. So. Yeah, we made it happen. It worked out. Are you are you going? Are you going to Jacksonville? Or are you going to Pure Words? Are you staying home with the kids? I'm going to Jacksonville. Um, ne not next week, but the week after. The week of August. Yeah, the first week of August. Yeah. Okay. Well then, I'll probably see you at the at the steadfast four year. Is it three or four? Four year? years. Four years. Okay, good. Well, great. Well, yeah. um, thanks for coming up with this. I I wasn't expecting it, but I'll uh, I'll talk to you later. Okay, Miss Leslie. All right. All right. Good night. Good night.